Hi everybody, I'm Nicole Kalish. I um, am doing this demo here with Barkley Groomer TV. So thank you to Barkley for having me. I'm actually the education manager with Andis, um, but I was a groomer for about 17 years. Um, so uh, I have a lot of experience. I have miniature poodles myself. This is one of my breeder's dogs, Stevie. She's a little bit of an older lady, a retired champion. And um, today we're gonna do shaving of the face and the feet, and I'll show you where to shave the tail band, and we'll do a sanitary. So basically anything you can do with an adjustable blade clipper. This is the Andis Vita. It's got the settings from 9, 10, 15, 30, and 40. So what I like to do is when I do a dog like this, get everything out of the way with this first so I can put it away, and then get into like the full clipping with my full size clipper. So on Stevie, we're gonna do a, I'm gonna start with a 15. So depends on the dog you're doing um, if you have a lighter color dog you obviously want to you know start with the longer lengths so they don't get irritated i'm pretty sure she can handle a 40 but i haven't groomed her for a really long time so i'm not sure so i'm going to start with a 15 and see how it looks are you ready and we're going to do her face so to determine where to shave the neck i look for the breastbone right here where it pops out a little bit i don't want to go lower than that because what it does is it makes the chest sink in um, so I will find where the breastbone is and I can see where her pattern was anyway so but sometimes they come with a ton of hair so you don't know and then I'm gonna start there and you can do a U shape or a V it doesn't really matter whatever you prefer and I hope she's really good <laughs> you ready so we're just gonna start creating where the line is gonna be there we go Okay, and we want the line from the top of the ear to the corner of the eye. Now, depends on their top knot, like she's an older dog, or top knot's kind of floppy, so I wanna make sure I push it out of the way so I'm not cutting it, because if I cut into the top knot, she'll have a real short part, it'll look like a mohawk. So I'm pushing it over to the side. And I'm actually going to go a little shorter on her. I'm going to go to a 30. So just make sure you know the dog. What can they handle as far as the length? If it's a new dog that you're getting in your shop or a light color dog, you definitely want to go on the longer side. There we go. Okay, ready? I'm going to go on this side. I don't know. If, hopefully you can still see, but I need to be on this side to do it. So I like to use this hand to hold up the ear. There we go. All right, what do you hear over there? She's very distracted with all the people. Good girl. Good girl, Stevie. And you want to get right up under that eye. What I like to do is I like to hold the eye up with this finger. Can you see? I hold the eye up with this finger so I can get right up underneath that eyelid. And I'm kind of stretching it back to get right into that under the eye. Okay, very good girl. I'm not holding her face tight. It's very much just kind of manipulating where the face is. And you want to get all this stuff under the chin. And pulling the neck up is going to open it up to get all this hair that goes in between the little folds of skin. But you want it tight. There we go. Good girl. Come here. Come here, mama. There you go. Okay. Pull the top knot out of the way. Right down the muzzle. Okay, and then when I do this side, I hold this ear back with my arm, and I'm still just grasping lightly, so there's no, you know, it's very gentle, and I can control where her head is going. So normally you would go in reverse. If they have a lot of hair, I'll go the other way just to get some hair out of the way so I can see what I'm doing. Good girl. Good girl. This, this technique with holding their head this way also is great when they want to do this with their head like she's doing now. Come here. What's going on out there? So if they want to rear their head back, um, 
your arm is right here, so they can't really do it. So you're in control. Good girl. You know, and there's a lot of people here. It's very distracting, so. There we go. Good girl. And just like all the dogs that come in your shop, you know, she's not a perfect angel. There we go. What a good girl you are. I'm holding her mouth shut so she can't stick her tongue out because we don't want to clip her tongue. There we go. And I'm going to go back to this side. All right, what a good girl. Okay, and I like to see where I'm at here. All right. I always clip out right in front of the ear canal as well. Especially if you don't pluck ears, you're gonna have longer hair in there. It's great to use one of these types of uh, adjustable blade clippers if you're just clipping. I don't usually like to use scissors there because there's so many folds and little bony parts. Clipper is great for that. There we go. Yes. So this is the Andis Vita adjustable blade clipper. So this adjusts right here from a 40 all the way down to a nine. It's just little clicks. So very lightweight. It's a USB cord. It has a stand. so. It's very convenient. To, and the USB cord's great because if you can't find your cord, just use your phone cord. <laughs> okay. Now, when you're doing the lips, you wanna pull those back to expose all that stuff that gets scrunched up right there. So let me see, I'll do this side. So I stick my finger into the lip, like so, and I pull it back. So. All that hair just popped out on the bottom from what was in there. And zip that right off. And depending on the dog, sometimes I will switch over to 40 just for that part because it does grow fast and it's harder to get to. So that's really up to you what you want to do there. All right. Get this other ear. Turn your head that way. And I will scissor up her top knot a little so you can see it when we're done. Next thing I'm going to do is her sanitary area. So I'm going to go to a 10 for that. That's what I prefer to use. Come here, Stevie. Good girl. If you have a small dog, you can obviously lift them up like this. We just go right in. Get rid of all this stuff they don't need. I do like to take it down the side of the thigh on the inside a little bit because Nobody's going to see it, and that area tends to get matted anyway. She has a lot of hair, so. All right, good girl. And then from the rear, come here. We will do her butt. And then inside, so I hold the tail in my hand. I pick up the leg in the natural position. Don't, you don't want to pull it out, so it's uncomfortable for the dog. Natural position, like if they were running or walking. And then I scoop to get all that stuff out. And I will do it from the other side, too, to make sure I got everything. Probably kind of hard to see. Stay there. There we go. And since we're back here, I'll do her tail band as well. So I'm going to stay with my 30 blade. A big mistake that a lot of people make are they make this shaved part way too far down towards the end of the tail. You don't want like a lollipop on the end and then all this shaved. A good reference is where their anus is. That's about where the tail band should be. You can see it's already been, you know, clipped before. So I'm going to go with what it was. I just go in reverse. Mm -hmm. 
And now I can see because there's so much hair there. <laughs> and you can get a really crisp line. Okay. Now, another little trick is, it's gonna be hard to see because she has a lot of hair. I like to create a little V in here. Um, so that kind of brings the tail up further, makes the dog look shorter. Um, to have a pretty poodle, you don't want them to look super long. So that's kind of a little trick that you can do. It's kind of an optical illusion. It's very easy to do. So where I finish shaving it, I'm literally gonna make two notches like that to find my line and then clean it up. Like so. I'm gonna scissor this just so you can see it because I'm not doing a whole haircut on her. So normally I would do like probably on her a pet trim. It's a total pet trim, like a two on the body, maybe a one on the legs to make them a little bit longer. So let's pretend I clipped it. <laughs> there you go. I just want you guys to be able to get an idea of what that looks like. And I'll lift her up so you can see it. Okay. And now that I got rid of some of that hair, I need to clean this up a little bit more. It's nice working with these on their faces and feet because it's very quiet. So, if you can see what I did there, it's obviously not perfect because I just scissored it real fast, but I took that up to about here. And so when you look at her, can you stand up straight? You can see what that did. It brings it forward. All right. Thank you. You're welcome. Okay, and then I'm going to show you some feet and a little trick that maybe you know, maybe you don't. I'm going to do a 40 on the pads. And let's see, how can we turn you? How about if we do your back feet? All right. Okay. So when I'm doing the back feet, I usually like to work this way. Using a 40 to clean out the pads. Which they were super long, you couldn't even see the pads. While I'm back here, I usually go up the sides too, just to get it off since I'm here. Stevie, come here. Now we'll put you back in here so you can stay. Good girl. Shut up. All right, and then I'm gonna go ahead and, if they have a lot of hair, I'll go this way first before I go in reverse just to get the hair off so I can see what I'm doing. They have two little ankle bones on the side. So if you're not sure of where to create the line, find those little bones. They, it's skinnier and then it pops out just a little bit on each side. So that's about where you're gonna want your line all the way around. Yes, you're a good girl. Okay, and then to get in between each toe, I'm using my finger behind her toes to push that out. So it kind of pushes out between the toes so you can get in between each toe while that extra hair, and then scooping it out like that. Okay, it's kind of hard to do it this way. 
I can also go from this side, spread her toes apart with my finger. And then go from the top as well, scooping. When I do it this way, I can get right up against that nail bed. There you go, yoga girl. Yes. All right, that's actually pretty good. She's got some hair that the clipper pick, does not pick up right along the nails. I'm sure you've seen that before. Um, and if you don't know it, you can flip your clipper over, push it up into the nail, and it will lift and cut those hairs. So, I know you just don't want to do that. So I take it this way, and I just push it up against the nail bed. And it just picks up all that hair. I'll do it on the front so you can see it a little bit better. Okay, we're gonna do the same thing. Pads. I'm sure you all know how to do pads, right? Oh, good girl. Okay, let's see. Okay, turn your foot. Again, I'm just taking some of the hair off going in this direction so I can see what I'm doing. I know, little girl. Yes. Ready? Ready? Good girl. Okay. You gonna sit or what are you gonna do? Yeah, you wanna sit? You can sit. Good girl. And let's get all that stuff from in between your toes. See, if you pop up with your finger, it opens up the toes so you can get all that. Sometimes I'll even push it out so it's a little bit easier. Working on a really clean dog is preferable. I don't like to put my nice clippers and blades and scissors on dirty dogs unless I absolutely have to. You know, for something that's totally matted, you're gonna shave it anyway. Right into the tub for me most of the time. Okay, so to get those hairs right along the nail bed, I'm just flipping it backward. What are you looking at over there, huh? She's very distracted looking at all the people. <laughs> That's okay. It's like having a real pet in your shop, right? There you go. What do you think of that? So the last thing I'll show you when you want to set the length on the legs, the cuff we call it, little bevel. You ready? What's over there? What? What's over there? I like to comb or brush everything down. I know where my shave line is. I can kind of feel where those ankle bones are. And I put my hand like this and go all the way around using my hand as a guide. What's over there? Look at her. She's like, I don't want to. Let me go this way. There we go. I'm still using my fingers here as the guide. And I should have very little to clean up with my scissors. Can you stand now? What, do you stand? So you can see it's pretty close. There's a little overhang here, so I'll just trim that up with my scissors. Good girl. Nice trick is to shake it out so that hair falls right into place. But there's really not much there that I need to cut. Of course, I would have had her leg trimmed already, but put it down. See, that's perfect little bevel. And if the legs were groomed already, obviously, we'd have nice columns. So we'll do this back one as well. Get my brush. Good girl. That's just a scissoring spray. I think I have Crown Royal number three in there. Just helps with scissoring. Good girl. 
when I do the back legs, I go this way. It's a little easier for me. I pull my hand down, use my fingers as a guide. This is set on a 40 on the adjustable blade. If you're gonna try this, if you don't do this already, I say err on the side of caution while you're learning. Because if you go too high up and then you let go, it's way high. It will look like high waters. We don't want that. Can you stay? Okay, you're so touchy. That's pretty good. Stay. <laughs> She's a tap dancer. There we go. I just need to trim very little there. I check from all sides. The back is perfect. Not really anything to trim there. Yep, it's pretty much there. So there you go. So that's how we do face, feet, towel band, sanitary with an adjustable blade clipper. This is the Andes Vita. Very lightweight, nice and quiet. So there you have it. Do you guys all use adjustable blade clippers? If you don't, get one. <laughs> They're the best.